Welcome to American Quarter Horse Racing Championship Night. This evening, we crown the best of the 2010 racing world. Over the past year, they've all been winners. This is where a select few become champions. Live from Heritage Place in Oklahoma City, here's Tom Dawson. And good evening and welcome to the Heritage Place here in Oklahoma City for the second annual webcast of the American Quarter Horse Association Racing Champions. We're here in the sales pavilion of the Heritage Place, a sale ring where a number of the nominees came, actually came through and sold. Uh, I'm standing here, I have no reserve for the right bidder, I just want you to know that. There are 21 awards that will be given tonight, uh, including some, or a plus, some special recognitions that we'll have during the program. The procedure is that we will uh, show you a list of all of the nominees in a category, announce the winner, show a race pertinent to that horse, the connections will make their way to the stage, and after photos, then my partner Dale Day, the announcer at Remington Park, will conduct an interview. There are 25 individual voters. I'm not one of them, I'm just the messenger. Besides, this is the most transparent voting process in America because the individual votes as recorded will be displayed on the website uh, very soon after these awards are concluded and the information will be available at the uh, AQHA booth in case you want to talk to anybody. Our special thanks to Jeff Tebow, Kevin Trimble and the staff here at Heritage Place for making this facility available and for helping us put everything together in order to have this, uh, these awards presented. So we're here to celebrate the accomplishments of 2010 and enjoy the replays of some great races, some, uh, something that I think we all uh, can't get enough of. Now afterwards, of course, there is a, a party out uh, in the back, but we want to get through and get to it. We're not going to set any track records, but we are going to clip along as, uh, as expediently as we can. For the first awards presentation, we'd ask the assistance of AQHA Executive Vice President Don Treadway to help us with the first group of presentations. So let's begin the evening with the Canadian champion, more purse money than ever, and racing at a new spot, Fort Erie in Canada this year. Here's the list of Canadian champion nominees. And we begin with Ada Shark, the four-year-old with five wins, including the Ontario bred maturity. Cerveza for me, winner of the Princess Stakes Futurity. Exceptional Strawfly, the oldest contender, four for eight last year. Jog My Memory, Ontario Jackpot Futurity winner. And Merlot to go, three wins and a second in the Ontario Jackpot. Then comes Ms. Molly Malone, two-time Derby winner at Ajax Downs. One cool shake, four wins and stakes placed. One Cool Wave, eight for eight, four Futurity wins. Pout Noki, five for seven with two wins in Alberta. And Six Pack of Corona, the defending champ, twice stakes place last year. And the winner is the undefeated one, One Cool Wave. Now here he is in one of his four Futurity wins. This is the Alex Peacock Memorial at Ajax Downs in right, September. Yeah. What cool way gets the quickest of all in the center of the track for Jockey Kimido, and she's on in front by three. This race is for place. One cool wave is going to remain undefeated lifetime, just opening up on the field, destroying them. Eight for eight lifetime. Quarter horse racing salutes another champion. One cool wave wins the Alex Peacock Memorial Futurity. Well, the race caller was excited, I'll say that for him. One cool wave by Wave Carver out of One Cool Bud, read by Robert Bailey, owned by Robert Bailey and Don Ito, trained by Don Reed, and ridden by Kim Ito. He's the, the leading Canadian money winner with $164,000. Never saw a photo finish in eight victories. He was a wave that literally washed over the competition. Dale? Everybody should have a horse like this, Bob. Congratulations. Eight for eight. As Tom said, very impressive. Only two of those wins were less than a length in victory. Both of those were at a half length, which is long enough, obviously. Far enough. Plans as a three-year-old. What's going on in 2011? Uh, still up for grabs right now. We're talking to sanding them down, but 
Uh, we're still waiting to see up home, see how the derbies work out, and from then on, we'll make a decision. Okay. I'd like to keep them up well up home. <laughs> Close. Okay, well, that, the next question. Will we ever get a chance to see them this year or any other time in the future in the U.S.? We are really thinking about it. We really are. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's the training show. Give us a track or two. Oh, it would have to be here. Oklahoma. That's the right answer. Right, <laughs> congratulations. It will be here. Dale Day, ever the publicity man, always soliciting for Remington Park. But we would very, very much like to see one cool wave against open competition in this country. I think he'd be the, he may be the TCU of, of quarter horse racing. We'd find out. All right, moving on to our next category. These are, this is the Mexican champion category. There are 10 on the list and eight of them are two-year-olds. Here they are. We start with Czech Dancer, two-year-old filly runner-up in the Garagnonis Futurity. Corona Lady, earnings leader of 143,000. Fisher's Chirino, won the Derby Criadores Mexicanos. Isabella Aiza, the Campeonato Juvenil. MSR Corona Classic, four wins, including the Subasta Selecta. Native Posies, Futurity Criadores Mexicanos, won $80,000. Royal Down Ryan, won the Derby Subasta, uh, Subasta Selecta. SF Double Assault, Futurity Mexico. SF Simple Big Boy, won or placed in three derbies. And Ship Ryan, twice stakes placed. And the winner and champion Mexican quarter horse for 2010 is Corona Lady. She won the Garagnonis Futurity and finished second in both the Futurity Sebastian Selecta and the Campeonato de Emil. She's the earnings leader and was first or second in all six of her starts. Uh, she's owned by, or bred by Everardo Musquiz, owned by Crispin Solis Ortiz from uh, Tlaxcala, Mexico. I uh, don't believe that uh, there are any representatives here this evening, so we will uh, endeavor to get them their award for Mexican champion. Moving on now to the next category. These are the ones that turn left for a living. The distance champions and the five nominees are the leading money winners in the distance division. Here they are. Start with BRT Opulence, five-year-old gelding and two-time 870 stakes winner. De Passum Oki, three stakes, including the Red Cell Distance Challenge. He's a bold color, was placed in five 870 stakes. Little Southern Swain, the only three-year-old in the group, won the New Mexico Cup 870. And Stony Motion, three open 870-yard stakes wins. And the winner and king of the hook for 2010 is De Passum Oki. He sealed the deal in the Red Cell Distance Championship. He'll be on the outside as they come down the stretch. Just under 440 yards to run. Bad Act Battles. Del Pasamoki, who's just forged in front. Del Pasamoki and Bad Act. And these two in a ding dong battle for the final 100 yards. Bonafide Man is third. It's Del Pasamoki and GR Carter Jr. Del Pasamoki scores over Bad Act. Bonafide Man was third. She burns, finished a well clear fourth. Four year old gelding by Oki Doki Dale out of a passable gal bred by Dr. Eddie Moore. Claimed by owner Steve Holt for $7,500 in April. He earned $132,000 by the end of the year. Trained by Rodney Reed, he raced at five tracks and won three 870-yard stakes. Dale, we all wish we could get one for $7,500 like this. And you always want one that runs in the money every time out as well. Perfect all through the year. But at $7,500, rate this claim to any others you've been involved with. Top 10. <laughs> <laughs> the only, really the only second horse I ever claimed. <laughs> I claimed the first one for broodmare and this one to run, so I might want to claim one next year. <laughs> well, and you claimed it right off the bat early in the Remington Park season, yeah. uh, Rodney Reed training. What did you attribute to success over the uh, rest of the year after you took over the campaign of this horse? Well, you know, this horse, uh, we watched him run early, and he needed a little weight on him, and he'd just come right out of, you know, a layoff. And we had been looking for one three or four years, and uh, but I just didn't get want to get anyone. And we thought he'd work. He'd run decent at three. 
against older horses. And uh, but a lot of the credit goes to Rodney Reed and uh, the jockeys, uh, Gr. Adam and uh, Tad Leggett. And you know, without them, we wouldn't be here. Thoughts for this year, 2011. You know, we cleaned. He had a little clean-up knee surgery after the challenge. We, he was off a little before the race, and we elected just to go ahead and clean him up. I think he'll be ready right at the end of the Remington meet, and we plan on running in the championship there at the end. Yeah, you know that race is worth 75 grand this year. Yeah, that's kind of what I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the pass to Boki, Tom. All right, and he had one other great uh, accomplishment last year. Did uh, to pass to Boki, he kept G.R. Carter from getting shut out on Challenge Championship night. Let's move on now to the two-year-old categories, and we start with the Colts. By my count, there were 16 open grade one futurities run in this country last year, and this group of Colts won eight of them, so it was a it was a stellar group, and the wins were spread all up and down the line. Here they are. We start with American Runaway, winner of the Ruidosa Futurity, second in three grade one stakes. Texas Classic Futurity winner, Bodacious Dash. First Down Illusion, Ed Burke Million Futurity winner. Freight Train B, winner of the Black Gold Championship. And Giorgino, three stakes wins, including the Sunland winner Futurity. Then, giving it a royal effort, winner of the Heritage Place Futurity. Mr. Peloto, All-American Futurity winner, two-year-old money leader. One Sweet Jess, winner of the Golden State Million. Prospect to the top won the Hobbs America Futurity. Six is liaison to Sam Houston. And West Coast Hawk, the winner of the Kindergarten Futurity at Los Alamitos. And the winner and champion two-year-old Colt, American Runaway. Here is his very impressive triumph in the Ruidosa Futurity at Ruidosa Downs. They're running. Fredonia broke a little out at the start and bumped into unanchored. American Runaway got a great break. American Runaway in front. Treason's going to chase him. Then Legendary Express and Royal Sandra to the outside. American Runaway, Treason, Royal Sandra, Bonicious Dash coming on. But it is American Runaway. The winner of the Aridoso Futurity. American Runaway by Ocean Runaway out of All-American Green Girl, bred by Lance Robinson in Utah. He was originally bought for $26,000 right here at Heritage Place by Sammy and Johnny Martinez. Then an interest sold to Bobby Cox after the Aridoso Futurity trials. Trained by Paul Jones, primarily ridden by Cody Jensen. He qualified for four grade ones he was 48 to 1 at Remington Park. He was never more than 8 to 5 after that. So, Dale, you have the American Runaway connections from, from start to finish. Well, and any one of the three of you can answer this question. Winning a championship, you won one futurity, so close in many others, and throughout the year right there, your thoughts on winning this off one big futurity win? Well, I'm speechless at the moment, but uh, first of all, I need to thank God for this amazing animal that he gave us. Uh, I thank Bobby for coming in and believing in the horse with us. But uh, we knew we had something when we first bought him, as we were broke, uh, breaking him and my brother. Um, just uh, it came kind of fast for us, you know, we weren't expecting this big of a turnout with him, but we were really proud of him. We thank Paul and Lisa and everybody from his staff at what they did on him, the jockeys, they all did a tremendous job on him, Larry, Tad, and, and of course, Cody. And I'm not sure what, sure what else I can say about that, but <laughs> you can <Yep>. believe this. <laughs> and Bobby, you came into the picture, well, not quite halfway through the year, but when did you first notice the town in this cold and uh, want to get involved? At the, uh, well, I was watching the uh, trials for the Red House Fraternity and I thought he was like the fastest horse I'd seen. And uh, so I called the next day to see if they were interested in the selling part or all the horse. And I was able to make a deal for half the horse and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. It's been a lot of fun and could have been more fun if we'd have won a few more races, but you know, running the seconds, not always bad. So yeah, we're grateful for the horse. Partners have been great. And uh, I've loved the association and uh, so we'll, we 
think we'll have a lot of fun next year. Hope the horse does well. So. Good luck to all of you in 2011. American Runaway, Champion Colt. Very good. Consistently, consistency rewarded, and that's not always the case. Let's move on now to the two-year-old fillies. And here they are. Starting off with the Snowy Cartel, the only two-time open grade winning two-year-old last year. A dash in first dash, third in the Los Alamitos, two million futurity. Brimmy's Alibi B, the TQHA sale futurity winner. Corona Lady, the Mexican champion. Endless Ocean, the Harris Entertainment and Hialeah Lassie futurity winner. Then we have First Painted Sign, the Oklahoma and Speed Horse Futurity winner. Flying Fig, three-time grade one runner-up. Personal Glory, third in the Ed Burke. Streak of Sixes, won three New Mexico bred Futurities. And the PCQHRA winner, the Goodbye Kisser. And the winner and champion two-year-old filly is Flying Fig. Now here she is in action setting the fastest qualifying time in the Golden State Million Futurity Trials in Los Alamitos. And away they go. And the one who came away the best was down the fairway, feature my Corona, Flying Fig are both underway on the extreme outside, and Flying Fig is coming on fast. Vivid Ladies running back and forth, but Flying Fig suddenly just takes off from the field, and take a look at Flying Fig. How fast is this horse going? Going to win by over two and a half and annihilate him over feature my Corona. Yes, indeed, it was very fast, the fastest qualifying time. She's a homebred of the Legacy Ranch of Pete and Evelyn Perella by Corona Cartel out of Tender Flyer, trained by Denny Eakins, ridden in all three futurities by Alex Batista. She finished second in the Golden State as well as the Ed Burke and the Los Alamitos 2 million and always behind a male. She's the two-year-old filly earnings leader with $715,000. That's more than $236,000 more uh, than the second runner-up. Dale, you got the trainer, Denny Eakins. Denny Flying Fig, she was all over. All those huge races worth more than a million dollars, but not quite there. Uh, beaten by male, so you were the top female in those races, yeah. but still, does this make up for some of those near misses? Well, it does because this is such a talented individual and she has it. She's just been a tremendous uh, individual this year. Uh, she had a couple tough, tough outings, you know, and she, uh, Drifted here and done a couple of things that got her beat, but uh, she set a track record. She's the fastest time that's ever been run at Los Alamitos, a two-year-old. And she won some nice races, and she just missed on three different occasions on all three of the two millions, or the three millions. She only got beat less than a neck for all three of them. Dr. Allred had a million dollars for, uh, if a guy had won all three of those things, I asked him if we'd get 500,000 for just being second in all three. <laughs> but, <laughs> He, he didn't quite go over that, but uh, <laughs> on behalf of Legacy Ranch, Pete and Ev Perella, uh, Sean Hadley, who's the manager, they're just elated to have this award and uh, have a tremendous filly like this, and we really appreciate AQHA and all of the racing. Plants is a three-year. Plants, uh, we're going to leave her till midsummer. then she'll go probably to Rio Dosa for a couple races down there and then back for a winter campaign at Los Alamitos. Right, flying Fig, champion two-year-old filly. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Denny. Congratulations to Pete and Evelyn Perella, 30 years in the business. They had a champion once before, a pretty good 870 horse named Griswold, but I know that they'd be very proud of Flying Fig. Let's move on now to the two-year-old Geldings. This group accounted for five open and three restricted grade one futurities last year. Very talented bunch. Here they are. Cole Cash, one, two, three, the Southwest Juvenile Champion. Corona Toast, second in two Louisiana bred futurities. DM Streaking Through Fire was an All-American and Texas Classic qualifier. He's Too Icy for Me, the winner of the Rainbow. Hot Hitter, Governor's Cup Futurity. JLS, Mr. Big Time, the Louisiana Quarter Horse Breeders Association Futurity and second in the All-American. Knuckles O'Toole, second in two grade ones. Lano Teller, four times a grade one finalist, winner of the Remington Park Futurity. MCM Dash Masters, two-time Louisiana bred Futurity winner. No Dice Special, winner of the West Texas. One quick first down, the Los Alamitos 2 million. And through the fire, two-time grade one qualifier. And the winner, yes indeed, he has hit the big time. JLS, Mr. Big Time. 
Now his, his Louisiana Quarter Horse Breeders Association win was impressive, but this is the one that put him in the national spotlight. The All-American on the rail. They're running. Headed out for the lead. Prospect to the top with Miss Racy Jess Dominion got away fast as well. Inside of that, we have Make Me Fly, then DM streaking through fire at the rail. Here comes JLS, Mr. Big Time. JLS, Mr. Big Time. Dominion far side. Mr. Pilato's coming on. Dominion, Mr. Pilato. Mr. Pilato, Dominion, and JLS, Mr. Big Time. A three-way photo for the win. Yes, indeed. A three-way photo despite... Losing by a nose, JLS Mr. Big Time certainly legitimized his championship bid. He's a homebred of the JLS Speed Horse Ranch of John Swallow, my big time favorite out of Salmis, trained by son Daryl Swallow, ridden to fraternity wins by Jared Deschamp, and that noted Cajun Jackie Martin. <laughs> Winner of six of nine starts, $599,000, a track record at Evangeline Downs, the Swallow family certainly no stranger to good horses, but this has taken it a whole nother step. All right, we just saw the very close second in the All-American. How does this feel in getting this award after really a tough beat in that big race? I think he liberated himself. <laughs> he set two track records, one in the trials, and then in, uh, he brought three in, with him in the finals, Corona Toast was second to him and he qualified the second fastest time. So I think he's a pretty good horse all around. We love him. We love him. Yeah, and he sets the track record you mentioned and then breaks his own track record. So what's ahead for him? Well, uh, right now we have lined up uh, the derbies in Rio Dosa and um, kind of left it open after that, see how he goes, uh, whether it's Texas, California, hopefully returns to form a little bit and we have a lot of tough competition next year. So we are looking forward to it. JLS Big Time was definitely Big Time Tom, as you mentioned. Congratulations, Thank guys. Thank you very much. He had great clean and everything. <laughs> Congratulations to John Swallow and the whole JLS Big Time group for a very, very exciting two-year-old year. Now to continue with the awards, uh, I'd like to bring up, uh, thank Don Treadway for his assistance and bring up the Chairman of the Racing Council, Dwayne Diedrichson, to take us through the next, uh, next group of awards. And that moves us to the three-year-old categories. And we start with, with the Colts. There are six nominated. They are Apolitical Jess, Super Derby, Champion of Champions, and a million dollars in earnings. Divide the Cash, and the, the Z. Wayne Griffin winner, twice grade one placed. Favorite Cartel, three-time grade one derby finalist. Fish and CR, winner of the Dash for Cash Derby. Good Reason SA, Golden State Derby winner. And Harem's Last Dash, winner of the Southern California Derby. And the champion three-year-old cult is a political jazz. Now he saved the best for last in a very strong campaign topped off by the champion of champions. He's on the road. And away they go on the champion of champions, as expected, a political jazz got off beautifully. Freaky also came out running strongly, and so did a tempting dash. Divide the cash begins here. This run on the far outside is a tempting dash. On the outside, a political jazz saddle. On the inside, Freaky's not firing tonight. And we have a two-horse race, a political jazz and a tempting dash. Our nose and nose and a political jazz. The sophomore wonder, he's the new freak in town. He wins the champion of champions over a tempting dash. Jeff, you and I and a Mary Doc Hawk rallied on to be in a photo, but it's a political jazz. The winner of the 2010 Champion of Champions. As we said, this is the only business I know of. One of two track record performances for Apolitical Jess, owned by the Rancho El Cabresto of Breeder Juan Tirado, by Mr. Jess Perry from the champion Apolitical Time, trained by Juan Aleman, ridden by Eduardo Nicasio, also won the Super Derby and led all Colts in earnings with a million sixty-six thousand and eleven dollars. Dale? How great is it to know with this record, especially last year, every time he goes out, he's more than likely going to be top two, if not just win it all? Well, this colt gives you everything he's got. You know, he's, he gets that from his mother, great mother. Um, what could more can you say about him? You know, he tries hard every time, and towards the end of the year, he got it done for us. Moving him up to the older horses, obviously he's three year olds, so then they go any older. Uh, your thoughts on winning the big one at the end? I know. Oh, well, you know, we're. Uh, 
we knew it was going to be tough with Freaky, Tempting Dash, all the top older horses coming to California for that Champion of Champions. Uh, but we knew uh, he was going to have a legitimate shot, and uh, he, he got it done. The political chess, champion three-year-old Colt? Very good, very good. It's, it's, it's very, very seldom that you find an owner speechless. Right. Moving on now to the three-year-old fillies. We have six in this category as well. We're starting with first prize, Lisa, second in the Texas Classic and Sunland Winter Derbies. La Mos Chingono, Who Dat Derby at, fair, at the fairgrounds. Pink Boots RM, Governor's Cup Derby and second in the Millie Vessels. She's the first ratified. She won from 100 to 400 yards last year. She's a fast hemp, won her placed in six Louisiana bread stakes. And Woody Dungarees, does not sound comfortable, three-time New Mexico bread stakes winner. The 2010 fashion statement for three-year-old fillies is Pink Boots. And here is her open rated stakes win in the Governor's Cup Derby in Los Alamitos. She is number one. And away they go in the Governor's Cup Derby. And Thinking Jazz and Peace Fire both started off well and so did Envy Here's Fish and Party. And now Pink Boots begins to accelerate down along the inside. And Pink Boots is raging with Ron down along the inside. Peace Fire is running a big one on the far outside. But Pink Boots just explodes away from the field under a stranglehold. Pink Boots wins the Governor's Cup Derby over Peace Fire and first down King and Fish and Party. But how good was Pink Boots that final eighth of a mile in 9.35? Yes, indeed, she was pretty good that night. Pink Boots by walk too far out of fresh alert. Read by Jose Santos, owned by the Isla Vista Ranch of Sergio Rodriguez, trained by Adan Farias, and ridden in major stakes by Rodrigo Aceves. And it appears we have no representative for Pink Boots, so we will see that they get their champion three-year-old Philly trophy. Now moving on to the three-year-old Geldings. Now, by, again, by my count, this is unofficial, <laughs> there were 10 open grade one derbies that I counted run last year, and this group of geldings took seven of them, so they were, they were really a tough bunch. Here's the list, starting with Acorn. He went six for seven, including the Attaquan Derby Challenge. Diamond for Jess, Remington Park Derby, an Attaquan runner-up. Double Down Special won the All-American Ruidoso and West Texas Derbies. Head Turner, Los Alamitos Winter and El Primero Derby. Smoky Stone, the only qualifier to all three Ruidosa Grade 1 Derbies. Streaking Down, won the Heritage Place and Texas Classic Derbies. And Swingin' Daddy-O, winner of the Rainbow Derby, second in the Ruidosa Derby. Champion three-year-old Gelding is Double Down Special. Now let's watch him on one of his many good days, winning the All-American Derby, wearing number seven. They're running. Smoky Stone came out awkwardly. Political Jess came away fast, along with Streak in down. And then it is first Corona call and double down special. Smoky Stone behind that. Bumping at the rail was favorite cartel with Mr. Truly Uno. A political Jess is in front. A political Jess chased by double down special. Here's double down special coming powerfully to get up to win. A political Jess is second. Photo between Smoky Stone and first Corona call. Jackie Martin continues his amazing comeback. One of three Derby wins, helping him to a million one hundred forty-seven thousand in earnings. Not only the highest total of the year, but it's my understanding it's the most ever by a three-year-old or older horse in a single season. Add to that a world record for 400 yards at Sunland Park. By the downside, at our Pamper Me Special, bred by Bob or Jerry Gaston, owned by by Vanessa Bartu, trained by John Steinbow, ridden to Derby wins by Sal Martinez and Jackie Martin. Dale. Vanessa Dub Down Special, five of six wins last year. Can you describe the whole year and then what the end of the year in, I don't know, a half hour? <laughs> well, when the money got so big in Rio Dosa for the derbies, the big guns came out. And when you stepped on the track with streaking down and swinging daddy o, you better have your A game because <laughs> it was tough. It's a tough year. He definitely brought it. John, he was kind of a late bloomer. Um, going from two to three and then really started to excel. Had he reached uh, the top of what he could do? Yeah, we didn't believe he had. Um, he was challenged several times and, and they couldn't get past him, so 
we thought he was coming to his best. He was definitely impressive, no doubt about it, especially over that last half of last year. Double down special champion, three-year-old Gelding. Tom? Well, we're very happy to congratulate you, Vanessa, and I, I'm sure you've had a lot of expressions from a lot of people about uh, sympathy for his untimely passing in December. He was shipped to California for the champion of champions, took sick and, and died right after, right after Christmas. But a uh, fitting reward for a great season for, for a great horse. Congratulations. Now the Age Stallions. That's my favorite group. A diverse group with stakes experience at many distances this year, including 550 and 870. Here's the list, starting with Frankie Schutz, twice graded stakes placed. Gone to the Mountain, three for three, including the Sunland Distance Challenge. Jess Jones, five wins and three stakes, including the SLM Big Daddy. Louisiana Feature won three stakes placings in New Mexico. And Splash to Paradise, who won the South American Championship in Brazil. And the winner, and a repeat champion, although in a different category, gone to the mountain. And here's the 870 specialist at work in the Sunland Park Distance Challenge. Burns on the rail. Got to the mountain on the inside, just in front. La Especial Corona throwing everything he's got at this leader. And up the rail, Sheep Burns. Got to the mountain just in front. Got to the mountain, pulls clear now by about three quarters. Sheep Burns on the inside. La Especial Corona's out of gas. But God of the Mountains rubbed off all the challenges and God of the Mountains long gone. And this is now a 50% win strike rate for the hero. What a horse. God of the Mountain wins again by a length and a half. Five-year-old by Panther Mountain out of Lindy's Bouquet, owned and bred by Clyde Warner of Georgetown, Texas. Written by Freddie Martinez, won the distance champion title last year. Became the first 870 specialist to capture the Aid Stallion title since 1985. Uh, so it's, a, it's, it's an unusual situation. Alternated stud duties and racing duties last year. Still the plan. Well, for the last couple of years, that was the case with Gone to the Mountain, and it seemed to work well. It did. It sure did. He stood him the last two years there in New Mexico, and he ran him out with it, you know, going back and forth. He came up here and ran in Oklahoma last year, went back out to California last year and went out there. So I'm not the owner. I'm just filling in for him, but I've, I'm real good friends with the family. Well, this is a good family to be friends with right now, especially. <laughs> you, get, you get to take the hardware home. Right. A winner of seven straight. Um, plans for 2011 racing and stallion duties again or one or the other? I think he's just going to stand at stallion. That's, that's what he told me. They all eventually choose that. Yeah, that that's where it goes. <laughs> all right, Tom. <laughs> well, if you're going to retire, retire on a season when you're three for three and a champion. So congratulations yeah, to Gone congrats. to the Mountain, champion age stallion. And I'll believe he's retired when I don't see him back on the racetrack. Moving on now to the age mares. Now, these six exceptional mares won 23 races last year, 18 stakes, 13 of them graded stakes. So this, this was a truly exceptional group. Here they are. Blazing and Shaken, the New Mexico Philly and Mare Championship at Zia Park. Feature Jess Rockin, won her placed in five stakes, including the Bank of America Challenge. Genuine Joy, five for six, won the Lou Wooten Handicap. Meridoc Hawk, four stakes, won the Millie Vessels Memorial. Spit Curl Diva, six stakes, two grade ones. And Stylish Jess B.R., winner of the grade one Charger Bar. The best of a remarkable group is Spit Curl Diva. <laughs> Here is their open grade one win against males in the refrigerator handicap at Star. They're off in the grade one refrigerator, and Stoli's winner got out just okay. Monty Stoli, Jess, you and I now bounding out there. And coming up there on the far outside now to join them and make a race of it here is Spit Curl Diva. And Spit Curl Diva running giant, bearing out badly though. Sherelle Kid Stoli's winner. Oh, no, my, it's very, very close. Spit Curl Diva was bearing out badly. Stoli's winner could have backed into it. It is too close to call. Stand by. 
we stood by, but the winner was Spit Curl Diva. Four-year-old mare by Spit Curl Jess out of Some Kind of Diva, bred by Little Deer Creek Quarter Horses, owned by the Lepic Morgan Partnership, Tom Lepic and Jill Mixer, trained by Jody Brown, ridden by her husband David Brown, two-time grade one winner, including the Marielle Distaff Challenge at the fairgrounds. She won the close ones, and I guess, Dale, if it's the mark of a champion that you win the close ones like a good team, she certainly is deserving. And she wins a lot, and she does well if she doesn't win. 26 of 30 lifetime in the money, 16 wins, eight last year. Tom, you came into this group uh, last year, basically. What made the decision to get into uh, action with Spit Curl Diva? When did it come about? It came about here at this sale last year. Uh, my jockey and trainer, uh, David Brown, told me the possibility of purchasing her. We went out to the Browns farm. We uh, talked to him. We were able to come to agreement on the, on the mare, and we were fortunate to get her, and we've had an incredible year, and it's been a great partnership. And the year continued to be strong, even after she left Remington Park, where all she did was knock out three track records at three different distances. It was an incredible year at uh, Remington Park. We were fortunate there, and, and uh, we did. We, we uh, moved along. We went to six different racetracks this year. We, we uh, won five different at five of them and, and had a tremendous year. And, and uh, you know, she's just an unbelievable mare. She loves to run, and, and uh, uh, we look forward to her future. Future holds. We're going to uh, flush a couple embryos here in the next couple months, uh, breed her twice to Corona Cartel, and then we'll uh, hopefully get her back on the track next year, April, May, somewhere in that area. We uh, won't run her again 10 times next year, however, and, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be ready and hopefully anxious to see how she comes back. All right, and Tom, Spickerel Diva, one of the best gate horses, at least in the last few years, absolutely launches from the gate. Well, I think she proved that by getting track records at 250, 300, 350, and then 400 yards. So that's a pretty good resume. Congratulations to Champion Age Mayor Spit Curl Diva. The age geldings are always one of the most contentious groups on the ballot. And this year there are, the wins were spread out pretty well. There are 11 nominees for Champion Aged Gelding. Here they are. Attempting Dash, winner of the Go Man Go, second in the Champion of Champions. Blues Man 2, winner of the Vessels Maturity. The Passamoki, the Distance Champion, won the Red Cell Distance Challenge. Easy Dash and Six is the Grade 1 Leo Stakes winner. Freaky, defending world champ, added two more Grade 1 wins. Jess, you and I, winner of the Remington Championship and Challenge. Nakoni, four for five, including the championships at Zia and Sunland. One Diamond Kitty won the Just Burner Memorial. Riley's Boy, the Sunland Challenge, second in the Bank of America Challenge. Stoley's winner won her placed in four stakes, including the Sam Houston Challenge and Zuper's Quick Dash, four-time stakes winner in Louisiana. This was a tough category. And coming out on top was Strong Finishing Nakoni. And here is the title clincher. Championship at Sunland Park, he's number five. Away, and Nakoni got out really well, bumping from Riley's boy onto Stoley's winner, who's out the race pretty much. Nakoni and Jess Delarie began the best, and Nakoni in full flight. Up in the center is One Diamond Kitty, and coming through is Special High Noon, but Nakoni burning out in front. Down the outside is King Bremerton, but it's all Nakoni. Nakoni first, King Bremerton second. Riley's boy third, time for Cigar 4. Finished with four rated stakes wins in a row. Five-year-old gelding by Mr. Jess Perry out of My Dashing Lady, bred and owned by R.D. Hubbard and Johnny Jones, trained by Paul Jones, ridden to those four stakes wins by Jackie Martin. He's a notorious late finisher. And maybe, maybe that's because he belongs to Johnny Jones. <laughs> Always known as a good finisher. Johnny, talk about Nakoni. Again, a great year last year. What made the difference <laughs> last year? You ran in many of the same races you did the prior year, but things worked out a little bit better. Well, he just got a little stiff at the end of the year last year, and then, we, of course, we gave him off until August, and he sounded as a bullet now and, and performed the way he can. You know, and he had a very good caretaker here. Out here, she loves him, but she's not. She kept playing at Holland. She's not keeping the Coney. 
and Jackie did a good job, and everybody's been very fortunate. A great year, a very uncommon showing in February with Nakoni. So you give time off. How hard was it to sit on a horse with this much talent for that long until the fall? Well, the horse kind of needed a break, and uh, when you got a good horse like this, you know you're better off to kind of pick and choose your races, and uh, they can't go all year long. So we we really made a good program with him, and it worked out well. well congratulations to Coney, a millionaire, and uh, made a lot of headlines at the end. Congrats. Left the record show, also represented by Mr. Hubbard's racing manager Tom Goncharoff, Sean Hubbard, and most importantly, uh, Lisa Sawmel, Paul Jones' assistant, who handled Nakona. <laughs> the heir to the throne, you say. Very good. Congratulations to Nakona, his second championship. He was the three-year-old uh, gelding champion two years ago. That's a very unusual feat to take a year off and then come back and win a championship. All right, we're going to take a little departure from the uh, immediate racing awards for something a little different. This is the brood mare of the year. Now there are numerous criteria for eligibility and 41 mares met those requirements last year. Too many to rattle off all the names, but they're all listed in your program if you want to peruse it. Let's just say that for the champion brood mare, the voters have selected a political time. Now her key foal, of course, was a political Jess. Here he is against the three-year-old division rival Double Down Special, the All-American Division Tribe. They're running. A political Jess got away fast. At the rail is truly Mr. Truly Uno to the far side. First Chrono Call, and now here comes Double Down Special after a political Jess. Then at the rail, Mr. Truly Uno, followed up by Winners Cartel, far side. First Chrono Call, a political Jess trying to fight off Double Down Special. A political Jess will. A political Jess. Then Double Down Special. Far side was first Chrono Call at the rail, Mr. Truly Uno. A political time. There by Apollo out of halftime attraction, bred by the Vessel Stallion Farm, owned by Juliana Hahn Holt. And our congratulations, no representative here this evening, our congratulations for the Broodmare of the Year Award. All right, now to the people. We'll come back to the horses in, uh, in a few minutes and give you the divisional champions, but first of all, let's divert to the, the champion horsemen, and we'll start with the ones that pay the bills, the champion owners. Here they are, achievements spread between several familiar faces and some first-time nominees. Familiar faces like Ed Allred, six-time champion, 54 wins last year. And Jora Corporation, 53 winners in U.S. and Mexico. Vanessa Bartu, leading earner with a million 157 in double down special. Bobby Cox, 2004 champ with 30 wins. Gustavo de la Torre earned over a million dollars and had one sweet Jess. Roger Girard, the North American leader in races, won with 70. Ivy Lane Racing, 36 wins. Rancho El Cabresto with champion A Political Jess. Christine Tavares, 56 wins, ranking second in the U.S. and Canada. Tremor Enterprises, over a million in earnings, including the All-American Futurity winner, Mr. Piloto. And the Vessel Stallion Farm, with two previous titles, 886,000 earned last year. So a newcomer or a familiar face? Turns out it's one we all know. Bobby Cox. Here's his top stakes horse, King Bremerton at work, B.F. Phillips at Lone Star. They're off. Last stole his winner had a mediocre start, streaking elusively on the outside. King Bremerton, Sherelle Kidd, but Stoley's winner is coming up here to challenge King Bremerton. Streak and elusively is third. King Bremerton leads, though. King Bremerton on stop, and King Bremerton spoils the party and captures the B.F. Phillips Jr. handicap. Stoley's winner second. Streak and elusively ran third. So 30 wins, over 800,000 earnings. One of the most impressive stats to me for Bobby Cox last year was the fact that he had winners at eight different racetracks, so he really, really spread it around the country. And Dale, Bobby has been around in this business a long time, a well-deserved award. Thank you very much. 
second uh, champion owner award. Talk about King Bremerton. We know about American Runaway and what he was able to do last year, but you've had King Bremerton. Your thoughts on him the past couple of years? Well, we, uh, we wait a little late to start him uh, because he was so big. He was just a, a giant yearling. And uh, he's just been a real sound and, and re really good little horse. And uh, he got, I think he got better this year than he had been in the past. And uh, so we really thought a lot of him. We don't have the mare anymore. We had the mare at that time. We sold her. We didn't know how good he was going to be. So we, uh, we've had a lot of fun with him. And he's still sound. And we'll probably run him next year. Now, are there any other names you want to throw out for 2011, or is it too early? Uh, well, we hope Dominion comes back and runs. Uh, the, uh, that was the closest I'd ever come to winning All-American. And, uh, you know, we hope to be back for the derbies next year and hope horses perform well. But that's the only other one that uh, I'm looking forward to next year. Two-year-olds coming naturally. The new, the new, the new one's coming up. Bobby Cox, champion owner. So expect a full frontal assault next year at all kinds of different racetracks from the Bobby Cox Stable. Congratulations. <laughs> now to the champion breeder. The folks that believe in the old saying, breed the best of the best and hope for the best, or at least breed to the best you can afford. Here are the list, starting with Mike Abraham. 71 wins and six individual stakes winners bred last year. Ed Allred, the leader with 181 wins, 2.4 million in earnings. Bobby Cox, third with 81 winners bred and a million 469. Dutch Masters, the 2005 champ, added 65 more winners last year. Bob and Jerry Gaston, two open grade one winners, 1.7 million in earnings. Juan Torado, breeder of the champion A Political Jess. Bill Price earned a million from 52 winners bred. And the Vessel Stallion Pine, two-time winner, finished third in winners last year. And the winner is the supplier of Quarter Horses to America, Ed Allred. And Dr. Ed had nine stakes winners bred last year, including the defending world champion, Freaky. And away they go on the Los Alamitos Championship, and Freaky was bounced around at the start. Stylish Jess came out beautifully. Snitcher's running on as well. Now Freaky begins to pick it up on the extreme outside. Dental on the inside as far as on as Snitcher and Freaky are putting on a show. But now Freaky begins to extend his stride. And last year's quarter horse world champion, Freaky's back in style. Stylish Jess is on for second. Snitcher finishing third, a mere splash fourth. But it's Freaky winning the Los Alamitos Championship two years in a row and showing his true class here tonight. And Dr. Allred wins the three title for the 11th time. He led in both wins with 181 and earnings with $2.4 million. Nine stakes wins with six separate stakes winners. He's not here tonight. Congratulations to Dr. Allred, and we will see that you get your uh, trophy by Pony Express. Now to the Champion Trainer Award, which has been renamed the Blaine Schwanevelt. Champion Trainer Award. Blaine, of course, won 12 straight trainer titles, and he would have had more, but they only invented the award um, like in the last third of his career. So there's no telling how many trainer titles he would have won. This 2010 group represents all the major quarter horse jurisdictions. Here's a list of champion trainer nominees. Adon Farias, 137 wins, ranking second and second in earnings as well. Paul Jones, the leader with 174 wins, 4.3 million earned. Judd Curl, a Sam Houston leader, third in North America with 97 wins. Felipe Quintero, 32 wins in the All-American Futurity. John Steinbow, a million seven in earnings with champion Double Down Special. Brett Vickery, 93 wins and he won stakes at eight different tracks. Luis Villafranco, Oklahoma-based trainer with 65 wins and seven stakes. And Eddie Willis, the Remington leader, and third on the money list, 2.7 million. Closer than usual, but it still belongs to Paul Jones. Here is one of his eight grade one stakes winners. Good reason in the Golden State Derby wearing number one. 
away they go on the Golden State Derby and a beautiful start for a good reason from down along the inside. Danny Cartel also came out running power play. Prince like has a chance on the extreme outside as these three have distanced themselves from the field as Good Reasons being asked the question and so as Danny Cartel and so as Prince like as Good Reason sticks that nose out and Good Reason and Prince like hit it in a photo finish looked like Good Reason Danny Cartel is third and divide the cash will be in a photo with runaway time and first down King for fourth in the Golden State Derby. Ninth straight track train the title for Paul Jones the leader in wins stakes wins with 18 and money. 21 stakes seconds, including what I think were a couple of real painful ones. So, Dale, I'm interested in how Paul would put this year into perspective. Yeah, how does this match up to the others, especially as Tom just mentioned, uh, some close calls to make it closer in the voting this year? Yeah, you know, it's been a a tough year because it was hard to top last year. We did so uh, unbelievably well last year. But... uh, We still had a good year. Um, I was really pleased. uh, I've had some really nice horses. We had some close seconds, but we we still were able to pull it off with some really nice horses. How have you been able to basically maintain the assault on American quarter horse racing as you have with many different operations going simultaneously at different tracks in different states? Well, it it all starts with a lot of good owners. Um, They give me uh, a lot of nice horses to train. And, and a lot of good help with people like Lisa. Um, I have some really good assistants. Um, I think my assistants are as good a trainers as anybody out there. And uh, without their help and good owners and a lot of good grooms and good jockeys, we got a really good team. Chances for 10 in a row? Well, I really hope so. Uh, th- this year was really special to me because it's called the Blaine Swanville Award this year. So I had a lot of respect for him. So it, it means a lot. All right, Paul, we have something else for you right here, I believe. Now, but yeah, before we go anywhere, Paul, there's another little presentation for you here. Paul is also the recipient of the Team Wrangler Champion Trainer title for accumulating, or champion title for accumulating the most points for Team Wrangler. There's a belt buckle for Paul, and Marin should know there's a check in there that you'll wind up getting. So our congratulations once again to the Paul Jones operation, Lisa Sawmel, for another great year. Here are the 10 riders nominated this year, all coming off of great years. Three of them separated in the earnings by, oh, maybe a little more than a Sullivan Park allowance race. Very, very tight. Here are the nominees. Starting with Rodrigo Aceves, had 106 wins and an injury shortened year, fifth on the money list. G.R. Carter, eight-time award winner, second in wins, or third in wins, rather, second in money. Alfonso Lujan, the four straight years, the wins leader, 166. Jackie Martin, a 25% win rate, 3.2 million earned. Cody Jensen, 84 wins, $2.7 million. Gilbert Ortiz, 134 wins, $1.87 million. Escar Ramirez won his first All-American Futurity. He was the earnings leader last year. Ricky Ramirez, 119 wins, 2.3 million. Bobby Ransom, 124 wins, 1.8 million. And Francisco Rubio, 159 wins, 1.9 million. A lot of great performances. I think this is going to be a little special. Jackie Martin. Now, barely two months after he started riding again, he's back in the winner's circle of a grade one future. They're running. The Lano Teller broke beautifully. This Corona is called in the center of the track. Also, quick Corona down at the rail. We have Classy Nicole, American Runaways, trying to get involved. This Corona is called in the far side. He's too icy for me. Here comes American Runaway. He's too icy for me. American Runaway explodes. He's too icy for me, I believe, beat American Runaway. Then this Corona is called and possibly Classy Nicole along the inside, but it will be a photo for the win. It was a photo, but it was a photo that he won. Jackie was third in earnings with the fewest mounts of anybody in the top 20. He tied for the lead with 13 stakes wins. And after four years of exile, he's both the champion and the comeback story of the year. 
Tracy and Jackie Martin. Jackie, this is your second uh, champion jockey uh, title. You won the first one in 2000. Obviously, a lot's happened in 10 years. Last year, you burst onto the scene like a newcomer in the second half of the year and, and take the nation by storm. Can you put any of this into perspective, what's, what it's been like recently? Uh, you know, it was, it was really hard for me. Uh, you know, I guess... Uh, Uh, you know, a lot of it goes to my wife, Tracy. I mean, she helped me through some bad times I had. Uh, a lot of good trainers. I mean, a lot of good owners that uh, put their faith in me when I first come back. Uh, it was something that, you know, when I come back, I, I did not have a horse to ride or a trainer to ride for. And, and I, I stepped foot in Rio Dosa the day after I got my license and, and thank New Mexico Racing Commission for everything for giving my license. Uh, they's the one that made it possible for me. And uh, from the first day I got there, I mean, Tracy and I, you know, knew we was going to have to work hard to, to try to make a comeback, but I had no, no earthly idea that it would turn out as good as it did. And I can only thank all the trainers and the owners for uh, putting their faith in my ability. A lot in just the last six months of last year. Years prior to that, you had tons of success. Did you ever have a six-month span like you had last year, ten, eight years ago? Uh, no, I, I don't. No, I never have. I mean, it was uh, it was something ironic, you know. I, uh, I guess Paul Jones he had talked to Tracy right before they run the uh, the championship at uh, El Paso and the, the Derby and the and the Futurity, all the last three big races that I've won there at El Paso and. And Tracy said, well, you're going to have to win them all three to get the, the title. And I said, well, you put a lot of pressure on me there, darling. <laughs> but it, it all turned out good. I mean, I mean, just the owners and the trainers, I mean, for putting their belief in, you know, that, that I could still ride a racehorse. And, and it all turned out really well for me this year. Champion jockey Jackie Martin. I'd also like to, before we move on to the next category, I'd also like to uh, wish a speedy recovery to Cody Jensen, who was injured at Los Alamitos the other night. Uh, I didn't, I was trying to get an update just before we started, but I wasn't able to do that. So I, I, I don't exactly know what's going on, but I do know that, uh, that it was a bad fall and we're hoping that he is back as soon as, soon as possible. So, well, had pelvic surgery today, and according to Paul Jones, it, it went well. So hopefully he'll be back, back in action very soon. Cody, we, we miss you. And we'll be joined for the next set of awards by Executive Committee member Johnny Trotter. Johnny, thank you very much. We're going to move to the divisional champions now, and we'll start with the two-year-olds. The contenders for divisional champion are the individual champions of each sex category. American Runaway, the champion Colt, who was first or second in four grade ones. JLS Mr. Big Time, the champion Gelding, winner of the Louisiana Quarter Horse Breeders Association Futurity, second in the All-American. And the Philly Flying Fig, runner-up in three million dollar plus Futurity. The winner and champion three-year-old is American Runaway. In a year in which no two-year-old dominated, consistency was rewarded here. And here's the uh, champion of trial at Lone Star. Resemble the stakes. They're off. Good break for a snowy cartel. Bounces out on top. Yano Teller counters on the inside. They're right together. And American Runaway now bears down. Look at these three. Yano Teller, American Runaway, running clear from the Philly. It's American Runaway, Yano Teller. American Runaway, Yano Teller. American Runaway, a good neck to beat out Yano Teller. And a snowy cartel, a well-beaten third. Originally, as we said, bought for 26000 right here at Heritage Place. Interest sold to Bobby Cox after the Ruidosa trials. Trained by Paul Jones, primarily ridden by 
Cody Jensen. Second in the Remington Park fraternity, the Rainbow fraternity, and the Texas Classic fraternity. Now, I don't claim to be that good in math, but I added it up on the chart. And what I came to was the three grade ones cumulatively were lost by three one hundredths of a second. It's about that far. So I don't know if that makes you feel good or bad. <laughs> America Runaway, talk about this award, what it means. Again, very close calls, some success as well. And a little bit of a slow start earlier in the year, but really came on. Well, it's, it, it, it kind of softens the blow of all those seconds, but uh, uh, we knew we had a great horse, and I had no idea we would get this award. And I'm just thankful for everyone that voted for us for the, for the championship. And uh, let all these partners talk. Well, Sammy, talk about, um, I mentioned the slow start at Remington last year. After about two or three races, things started to pick up, but did you ever start to wonder if this horse had it? Well, we knew he had it when we were breaking him, like I said earlier, but the problem with me when I first started him, we work out of a small, well, out of our backyard, really, so his first schooling race was his first maiden race. He never worked with company. So when we worked him at the house, I could tell he had some ability, but uh, he didn't show his uh, potential till Paul got a hold of him and, and Lisa, of course. So, but yeah, he boomed from there. Paul, when this horse came to you in New Mexico, what were your thoughts after what you'd seen earlier in the year at Remington Park? Well, I, I was just really honored uh, for Sammy and Johnny to give me the horse. You know, they train horses on their own. They've done extremely well in the past, and they really had a really good horse on their hands, and when they asked me to take him, I was just honored to have him. American Runaway. Yeah, well, yeah, we asked, uh, I think, earlier, but refreshed our minds, uh, especially mine, what's happening in 2011? Well, uh, I think that in uh, Rio Dosa next year, and uh, uh, we just have to let the horse tell us uh, what he's ready to run in, and I think Paul will do a great job getting him ready. And Is he getting time right now? Yeah, he's taking a little break right now, and he'll be back at Rio Dosa, hopefully, for the uh, Rio Dosa Derby and the Rainbow and the All-American. American Runaway champion two-year-old. Champion two-year-old Colton, take a run at the great three-year-old derbies at Rio Dosa where there's a lot of money to be had. Congratulations. Now we move to the champion three-year-old. The contenders are the champions of the three categories. The champion Colt, a political time, winner of the Super Derby and champion of champions. I guess that's a political Jess. I keep wanting to call him a political time, I guess because I liked her so much. I always call him by her name. The Philly Pink Boots, winner of the Governor's Cup, second in the Millie Vessels. And the Gelding Double Down Special, winner of the West Texas Ruidoso and All-American Derbies. And the winner and champion three-year-old, and a tough one, is the Colt Apolitical Jazz. And here is the first of his track record performances, the Losal. And away they go in the Los Alamitos Super Derby. And a political Jess absolutely flew out of the gate. It looks like he's going to run. Lights out. Forest Fire is coming up on the outside. And Prince like and divide the cash. But it's a political Jess who's absolutely raging with run. And a political Jess says, Freaky, where are you? Because I'm going to be a base threat in the champion of champions. He destroys the field over divide the cash. Forest Fire back to third. Prince like and fourth. But a political Jess will be one of the favorites for this year's champion of champions. And one of the favorites for the champion of champions. Track record performances owned by the Rancho El Cabresto of Juan Tirado, trained by Juan Alleman, ridden by Eduardo Nicasio, the fastest qualifier for both the All American Derby and the Super Derby. So, one more time with trainer Juan Alleman. Juan, talk about that Super Derby we just watched. It looked, obviously, sets a track record, but it looked like he was just doing it so easily as he pulled clear. Well, he was back home, he was back in California. You know, coming from uh, Raydoso, we took him in the summer in Raydoso. Came up a little bit short there, but uh, when he got home, uh, we knew he was going to be tough at home. Okay, and then after that race, thinking about the uh, champion of champions, uh, your thoughts after that one towards the one against older horses? Well, I was feeling good after that one. You know, breaking the track record, uh, taking the record away from Freaky. Uh, we knew we were, uh, we were going to be in the hunt in that champion of champions. Your political Jess, impressive uh, many times last year, champion three-year-old. Congratulations to A Political Time and A Political Jess, the whole family. 
All right, now the champion aged horse. The contenders are the champions of the three age categories, starting with the stallion, gone to the mountain, off of a perfect three for three season. Champion mare, Spit Curl Diva, six time stakes winner. And champion gelding, Nakoni. <coughs> sorry, Nakoni, I didn't really mean to choke on that, Johnny. Four straight grade one stakes wins to close the year. And the winner and champion aged horse is Spit Curl Diva. <laughs> Here's one of her early season successes as called by Dale Day. They're off in the Bob Moore. Good start, Duck Me. Running Spit Curl Diva came away fabulously down towards the rail. Smoking past you now. Coming on strong. It's smoking past you and Spit Curl Diva. These two trying to get clearance. Spit Curl Diva coming on and Spit Curl Diva pulling away in the Bob Moore to win it by length. That was the second, I believe, of many six wins of the six stakes wins last year. She was a road warrior, as we said. She won them at five different tracks, won the close ones, three of the stakes against the boys. She was a two-time grade one winner, including the Muriel Distaff Challenge. Once again, the Spit Curl Diva group. Tom, Spit Curl Diva, congratulations. Champion age, George, your thoughts? An unbelievable year. You know, we, we were just hoping to have a, a successful campaign this year with her. We, we uh, paid the late fee to put her in the... Uh, Challenge series, hoping that maybe we could win the uh, champion age mare, and and we had a year that you could never believe, and to win this honor, it's uh, amazing, and and I can't say enough for David Brown, who with without David Brown, we wouldn't be here today. David, you've been around her really since the start, and uh, trained her there for a while, and then came back to riding with her last year. Now she always, we mentioned, has been a great gate horse could dominate at the shorter distance, but she seemed to hit some sort of a wall at around 400 yards. She maybe would have the lead and not quite get there. What took place to get her over that hump to get those 400 and 440 distances? Well, we changed up um, some equipment on her, like our blinkers and stuff, where you could see, see more horses and stuff, and I think it really helped her and everything. And um, I mean, she just has come to herself this year as a four-year-old. Now, you've rode some good ones over your career, but you were, you were not stopped riding there when you were training her. Is she the one that brought you back to the saddle? Um, a little bit, and Tom had a lot to do with it too. And um, but I mean, she, she's she's worth coming back with. Okay, and then can we get to see her some more this year? Yes. Yeah, sure. We'll have her back this year after they get done embryo. Spit curl diva, champion aged horse. Well, if Roy Brooks can come back to riding at age 69, I don't think it's any surprise that David Brown could come back to riding to ride a mare like Spit Curl Diva. Our thanks to Johnny Trotter for his assistance. We'll get you back up in a, in a minute, Johnny, to continue. Right now we want to pay some tribute to some other winners of AQHA awards this year. Starting with the 2010 Open Supreme Champion. Now it's an award that's seldom given by AQHA. It's reserved for horses that have really fit a special criteria. They have to have earned a, two official speed ratings of 90 or better and won a total of 40 or more points in recognized halter, performance halter, uh, or performance classes at five or more shows under five or more judges. So that's uh, only 48 horses have managed to meet all those criteria. And the one that's being added to the list this year is the, it's the Gelding Cartel Caliente owned by Walt Fletcher. He won two races, $50,000 while on the track, and earned 62 and a half points in halter and performance. So congratulations, I know Walt's here someplace. Walt, we can't give you any money, we'll just give you the award. Congratulations. Now beginning in 2007, the AK AQHA began recognizing outstanding quarter horse dams for their lifetime contributions to the racing industry. And you have to meet at least one of these five criteria. If you're not a lawyer and don't want to read the whole thing, I'll quickly tell you that it's produced two champions or three individual grade one winners or two grade one winners plus two horses in the top 10 in a given year or three in the top 10 or three stakes winners prior to the grading system being implemented that would be complementary to a grade one today. Tonight, two new dams of distinction being honored 
They are Swingin' O'Toole, 1996 mayor, who has three grade one winners, Swingin' E's, Swingin' Jess, and most recently, last year, Swingin' Daddy-O, bred by RC Running Horses and owned by Johnny Trotter. And Time for a Goddess, full of 1986, with two graded, grade one winners and two champions. Time for a Cigar and Royal Time Classic, bred by H.G. Stevenson and owned by Abigail Kawana Nakoi. So congratulations, Johnny and Abigail, for the Dams of Distinction, for a distinct dam. Also, American Quarter Horse Association recognizes supreme racehorses. That criteria is to earn 500,000 or more during their careers, at least 10 victories, and two of those wins have to be grade ones. This year, there are four new Supreme racehorses. Two of them have been honored tonight as champions. They are Spit Curl Diva and Nakoni. Two others were champions last year. They are world champion Freaky, owned by Armando Aguirre, bred by Ed Allred, and champion mare, aged mare, stylish Jess B.R., owned by Benny Rossett, bred by Dr. Jim Burgess. So those are the AQHA Supreme Racehorses added for this year. Congratulations to them. For the last decade and a half, all references to the leading money earner in quarter horse racing went right through Refrigerator. His career mark, $2,126,309, was established in a six-year career from 1990 through 1995 and it included being the first quarter horse to top two million in earnings. Now that's a long time to hold an earnings record, particularly when some of the purses are at a higher level today on a dollar for dollar basis worth more. But tonight and now in quarter horse racing, there is a new leader and we recognize the accomplishments of Stoley's winner. He's owned and bred by Jerry Wyndham principally trained by Heath Taylor, 12 wins in his career so far, earnings of $2,163,581. Some of the awards he has uh, obtained are three championships in his two-year-old season. He won three grade one futurities that year. He won the Texas Classic Derby in 2009, the Sam Houston Challenge in 2010, there are those championships, plus he was a AQHA Supreme Racehorse in 2009. Here is a video tribute looking back at the career of Stoley's winner. <laughs> They're off the Heritage Place Futurity. Out well, Corona Fireball. Also right there, Stoley's winner. Just zooming at the rail, trying to advance. Rarely makes it home, trying to get up into a piece of it. Miss Sintacha rolling on the outside. Miss Sintacha, Stoley's winner. Just zooming. These three, Stoley's winner has the lead, and Stoley's winner takes the million dollar Heritage Place Futurity. They're running in the Rainbow Futurity. Good break from all. From the far side, Cashing in My Dreams broke good. For the inside, we have Stoley's winner, then Fast Prize, zooming in, several million between horses. Here comes PB and Crackers, this one's wide open. Stoley's winner, PB and Crackers, Fast Prize, zoom, is defeated. Stoley's winner, Stoley's winner, the winner of the Heritage Place Futurity wins the Rainbow Futurity. And they're running. All got away well. Stoley's winner from between horses with Jet Black Patriot, then Mighty Corona and Winner's Version. Just significant down along the inside, then Cala Fugitive, but it is Jet Black Patriot and Stoley's winner. These two are pulling away and leaving the others in their wake. Stoley's winner, Jet Black Patriot, Stoley's winner, Stoley's winner wins the All-American Narrow. Stoley's winner began on terms, but not the fastest. Zima Lou came out very well. Fearless Fritz, Stoley's winner, Jess Zuman on the inside takes off, but now Stoley's winner. We're about to get a good look at some remarkable talent here. Stoley's winner came to play. How good is Jess Zuman running on the inside? But Stoley's winner, Cal
captures the Texas Classic Derby. And runners away. It's a good start for Soli's winner on the inside. Special headlines gone off well. And classified bull is right there. Racing on from the outside, Exocate has a late charge now as they race to the finish. Stoley's winner out front, looking strong. Stoley's winner is back. The career of all-time earnings leader Stoley's winner and Jerry Windham, if you're in the house, please come forward. There he is. Jerry Wyndham and trainer Heath Taylor for a special presentation by AQHA Executive Vice President Don Treadway for the lifetime accomplishments of Stoley's winner. A photo opportunity at hand. Hope that's the win record on the back. Yep, that's good. And Dale Day with a question or two for Jerry Wyndham. Jerry, congratulations uh, on the long and successful campaign for Stoley's winners. Your thought right now? Well, <clears throat> we're very proud of of the accomplishment, <clears throat> and uh, of course, uh, Refrigerator was a great champion and a great horse and a great record holder for for a long time. So it's quite an honor to break his record. And Heath, uh, you've had great success, obviously, with Stoley's winner as well. And Tom mentioned. It used to take a lot longer to even dream of getting to money like this, but it's happened in a much shorter period of time. Your thoughts right now? Well, I mean, he's just, after watching the video tribute, it's hard to look back and think of what he's accomplished. Um, it's been a great gift to, to everyone. Everybody's been through a lot. I'd like to thank the Wyndham family for the opportunity. Thank Tom Zerati for putting a good base under the horse. And, uh, you know, the horse has had some, some tough times. I think that... Uh, He's got like Brett Favre. I think he's going to come back one more year, and the next one I hope is his best one. But uh, he's uh, he's actually doing a little bit better. He had a rough race at Sunland, and uh, you know some of the tougher races he had really wasn't his fault. And uh, maybe we'll get him a little more right, and uh, hopefully you get to see him some more in the racetrack this next year. All right, Jerry, uh, thoughts on when he might come back, or should I leave that to Heath? Well, we may run him at, uh, another time or two, the first of the year, and then give him a break and go from there. And unlike Brett Favre, Stoley's winner is still with the same team all the way through. <laughs> and he's not faking retirement. He's <laughs> they're acknowledging that he's going to stay in action. Stoley's winner, a winner on the racetrack and a winner in front of the racing commission, which sometimes is the toughest battle to win. I would ask Johnny Trotter to rejoin on stage for the final award for this evening. And by the way, we're right about on time. I'm supposed to be done, and the bar's supposed to open at 7.30, and I promise I'm going to get you there. <laughs> the most coveted title in quarter horse racing, that of world champion racing quarter horse. The contenders are the champions of the three divisions that we've already announced. Let's take one more look at them. They are the champion two-year-old, who was the Colt American runaway. The last two-year-old to win world champion, by the way, was Stoley's winner. But for a Colt, you gotta go back 22 years to Merganser for the last Colt champion. Three-year-old, a political jest, champion three-year-old, five consecutive three-year-old champions in the last decade between 03 and 07. And the age champion to spit curl diva, the last age mayor world champion was a great down with debt back in 1994. So which will it be? As it turns out, the three-year-olds rule again. A political jazz, the world champion for 2010. One more time on the smashing year-end win in the champion of champions, wearing number one. And away they go on the champion of champions, as expected, A Political Jazz got off beautifully. Freaky also came out running strongly, and so did A Tempting Dash. Divide the cash begins hit his run on the far outside as A Tempting Dash. On the outside, A Political Jazz settle on the inside. Freaky's not firing tonight, and we have a two-horse race. A Political Jazz and A Tempting Dash are nose and nose and A Political Jazz. The sophomore wonder, he's the new freak in town. He wins the champion of champions over A Tempting Dash. Jeff, you and I and a Meridoc Hawk rallied on to be in a photo, but as A Political Jazz 
the winner of the 2010 Champion of Champions. Now the accolades have all been given for two grade one wins, both in track record time, over a million dollars in earnings. In fact, he now ranks 19th on the all-time earnings list at $1,399,831. He is at stud at the JEH Stallion Station, Oklahoma. So it's possible that we have seen the last of a great champion, but I'll leave that to Dale to find out. All right, we're going to talk with Juan Torado, owner of uh, a political Jess. Uh, let me step in here with Betty Berge, uh, manager of Hispanic Relations for AQHA. Juan, congratulations. Uh, your thoughts right now on the world champion on it. Okay, firstly, I, I want to thank to God and to Niñito Jesus the, of Mazatlan. Um, I, I also thank to and congratulate to the trainer, Juan Alemán, to the jockey, Eduardo Nicasio, and the groom, Roman Nicasio. Um, uh, it's, it's an honor for, for me to receive this award. Um, I want to share with my wife and my daughter. Um, uh, my daughter itself in Arbella, uh, she's uh, watching uh, in live in Mexico. Um, Arbella itself, <laughs> lo logramos, hija. <laughs> Tenemos un campeón mundial <laughs> en la familia. Muchas gracias. Thank you. A champion of the world. I think everybody could understand that one. Let me ask one more. Uh, how difficult is it to, st to stop racing such a great horse like this? Que para ya no tener un caballo to stop. Como terminaron el año. Como se sienta. Estoy. I'm very happy. Very happy. Temblando. Uh, temblando. <laughs> Es um, mucha emoción, siento mucha emoción. A lot of emotion, a lot of happiness. Sí. Eh, otros caballos hicieron muy buen papel, otros caballos, este, eh, los felicito realmente. He wants to thank all the other horses that were running because there were some good horses running with him also. So it's a tough race for the year. Realmente estoy muy emocionado. Eh, yo y mi familia queremos mucho a los caballos. De corazón lo sentimos también Juan Alemán quiere mucho a los caballos él hace un muy buen trabajo y, y este y pues gracias a Dios nos tocó estar aquí en, en, en este en este premio tan importante de campeón mundial. He said it's a very important honor to get this and he is just very emotional. Um, he wants to thank everybody, his trainer, his family, that there is a champion now in the family. Juan Alemán I mentioned stopping this horse going off to stud duty. How much will he be missed? Oh, I mean, uh, by me especially. <laughs> uh, you know, everyone wants to have a horse like this in their barn, but uh, I think I told Mr. Uh, Torado that uh, let's do what's best for the horse and to stand him at stud. That was the best for the horse. To do. Congratulations to all connections. A political jest, world champion. 2010 world champion. Muchas felicidades a todos. As we would say in TV, that's, per that's a wrap. Now don't forget, and for those of you watching online, I'm sorry you can't participate in this part of the show because we're going to have a party. Now, I would request that all of the winners make yourself available for some uh, additional picture opportunities for uh, the uh, journal and a couple of interviews they'd like to conduct with the world champions and with Jerry Wyndham. So other than that, send somebody to get you a drink and stay here for a minute. So. Thank you all very much and good evening.